Hello guys. Uh, so last time we went through some permutation and it will be about the combination. And I told you that permutation is nothing but the arrangement of all parts of a set of objects. Can you see my screen? Yes. So permutation is an arrangement of all or part of a set of objects. There is a permutation. And then after we went through these examples that uh, n number of objects are there, then permutation would be in n factorial form. So number of permutation of n objects, there is n factorial form. Factorial notation, already I gave it to you last time, n into n minus one goes up to one. And then after the definition of permutation, n tr equal to n factorial over n minus r factorial. That means we are selecting r objects out of n. That is the meaning. One example we went over here, one another example is over here, we went over this example two and then after I told you that whenever you have a circle the permutation of n objects arranged in a circle that means you have to count one minus so it is n minus one factorial so so far we have considered only the permutation of distinct objects but suppose that it may be possible that we have a permutation or set of arrangements in which some of the elements they are common or I mean to say that n is not distinct, but it's a repeated n. So whenever we have this type of situation at that time, and that's why I give you the example that suppose out of four objects, A, B, C, and D, suppose A and B that is equal to some equal to X, in that you can see over here A and B, they are X. So that means the repetition, right? They are not distinct. Or if you have A, B, C, D, say A, B equal to X and C, D equal to Y. In that case, you can find the number of distinct permutation that is given like this, the number of distinct permutation of N things out of which N1 are of first kind, N2 is of second kind, N3 that is of third kind, N k that is of kth kind. That is given the formula N factorial over N1 factorial, N2 factorial, N k factorial. And then after I give you this example about the junior, senior, sophomore, freshman students, when 10 students in a row and we want to select like this, one freshman, two sophomore, four junior, three seniors, that means the arrangement can be given in by using this formula and 10 factorial over one factorial by two fact and two factorial, three, uh, four factorial and three factorial. And if you use the definition of factorial notation, you're going to get this one. And then after the last example, I give it to you in which we had two cells in two, uh, two cells, we can say of vocals, A, E, I, O, U, out of these vocals, we can make one cell that is of our one subset of R containing four elements and another contains just one like this. So we have these uh, four possibilities because we have four possibilities and you can see over here A, E, I, O, A, E, I, O, then A, I, O, you can see here we have some kind of arrangements. That means repetition of A is here, A is here, I is here, I is here, O is here, O is here. So whenever we have this type of situation at that time, we can say that. So uh, now we are concerned with a number of ways of partitioning a set of N objects into R subsets, then that is called cell. So I have one cell over here that is that contains four elements, another cell over here that contains one element, that means out of five, out of five, one cell four, another cell one. So I would say it is five and then four and one. So if you write in terms of factorial, it is five factorial and four factorial and one factorial. But this leads us to the very important concept of combination because this five, four, five and here five minus four is one. So N and minus R, and then R factorial, and then R factorial. So that is nothing but the combination. That is nothing but the combination whenever we have the repetition of our N. The number of ways of partitioning the set of N objects into R cells with N1 elements in the first cell and two elements in the second cell, right? And three elements in the, and this n one elements in first cell and two elements in second cell. But whenever n one elements in first cell and two elements in second cell at that time, you can make sure just like your a and i and o that elements they are there in both cells. So that is given by n n one n two up to n r n factorial or n one factorial n two factorial or n r factorial where n one n two up to n r that is nothing but your n. So how many ways that seven graduate students be assigned to one triple and two double rooms? One triple and two double rooms. Now seven students are there. Suppose you can pick these three students 
randomly out of the seven and send them to triple room in which we have three uh, three beds. So triple room. That means now four students are left out. Out of these four students, again you can pick any two and send them to the one double room. And another last two students they are sent to the last double room. It means the two beds. So that means total seven students. And then after we have one cell. First cell R or R1, or you can send one that is three, second cell is two, third cell is two, like this. So it is seven factorial over three factorial, two factorial, two factorial. So that is like 210, right? So in many problems, we are interested in the number of ways of selecting R objects from N without regarding, without regard to order. See, order is not important, right? In all previous cases, order were, order were important. Here now, order is not important. That is the major difference between permutation and combination. In com permutation, order must be maintained. Order is important. In combination, order is not important. It should be in, in any of the orders. You can see over here in this form, you can see uh, just the last example. In vo vowels, you can see A, E, I, O, and here my order is not important. See here my A is over here, and I and O, I is here. Look at your third position. That I is over here at second position, right? Like this. Here you can see A is at second position. Here A is at first. So order is not important. When Because order is not important in that case, I just mentioned five, four, one five total number of n elements and first cell four elements, second cell one element. So that's why we can we wrote it down in terms of five factorial and five minus four and one factorial in this form n and r and n minus r. Or I would like to say n, n minus r and r. So exactly same thing is over here that so this combination that is given in the form of n, r and n minus one is usually denoted by NCR. This is read as NCR, or you can write N bracket N and R. So definition for the combination in which order is not important. So number of combination of N objects and distinct objects taken R at a time that is given by N factorial over N minus R factorial times R factorial. So this R factorial is the additional term for the combination than the permutation. Let's go for this example. Now, I just would like to read you this example. And we can solve that example too. And then after we will start solving some of the examples from the book. Here it says that a young boy asked his mother to get five Game Boy, five Game Boy cartridges from his collection of 10 arcades and five sport games. Now look at over here. The collections are like this, 10 arcades and five sport games. So 10 arcades, five sport games, and the mother, a boy, asked his mother to pick five out of this combination, 10 arcades and five sport games. And that mother, she wants to pick up five cartridges. How many ways that there is, uh, that his mother can get three arcades, three arcades from 10, look at here, there are maximum 10 arcades. So out of these 10 arcades, she needs to pick, she needs to pick up three arcades. Out of this five sport games, she needs to pick up just two spot games. So that's how these five cartridges, Game Boy cartridges would be done. This arrangement would be done like this. So I would like to again share my screen so that probably idea would be more clear. So let me just stop sharing this one and let me share my screen. So my screen is, here I have the number of ways selecting three cartridge out of 10 I don't want to write each and everything. Why my pen is not moving? Okay, so uh, out of 10, I need to consider three. Now, as I told you, order is not important. That means irrespective of these 10 arcades, C wants to pick just three. So there is no any kind of order. So that's why I would say that that is equal to 10 factorial because this is my N and this is my R. So that's why I would like to say NCR that is equal to this one. Some people write like this also NCR, but usually we do not, we do not like this NCR. So there is N factorial, then N minus R factorial. So that is equal to 10 minus three factorial times R factorial. So R is equal to three factorial. 10 factorial divided by 10 minus that is equal to seven factorial times 
times three factorial. So that is equal to 10 into nine into eight into seven factorial divided by seven factorial times three factorial. Three is written as three into two. This seven factorial, seven factorial will get canceled out and here it is three. So three, three is a nine. Three, three is a nine. And here I have four. So that means it is four, three is a 12 and 10, so it is 120. So there are 120 ways that you can pick up three arcades out of 10. Same way we can go for uh, what? Five spot games and she needs to pick up two sports games out of five. So out of five, she needs to pick up two. Again, any one out, out of these five, irrespective of order, she is going to pick just two. That means again, it is combination because order is not maintained. So I would say that five factorial and five minus two that is equal to three factorial times two factorial. So five multiplied by four multiplied by three factorial divided by three factorial and two factorial is simply two. This will get canceled out and this is equal to two. So that is equal to 10. That is equal to 10. So total, you can see this is my event one. This is actually my event one. This is my event two. So if you go for rule one, so rule one says that if n n one even first event that is by n one second is by n two. So I'm going to write n one times n two. So that is equal to one twenty multiplied by ten. So that is equal to there are total twelve hundred ways of selecting five spot gate. Oh, sorry, three. My bad. There are twelve hundred ways of selecting three arcades from the box of 10 arcades and two sports game from the box of five sport games, total five Game Boy cartridges from these 15 combination of 10 arcades and five sport boys, uh, sport, sport games. So these are the ways how you can find, you can use the combination problem. This is one of the examples. I would like to go for the second example. Second example that is, suppose I give you the word statistics. S T A S T I C S. Whenever you are working with any of the letters like this at that time, blindly you can apply combination. Blindly, it's a combination because we have, for our sense, we have, I mean, say this makes some sense to us, the statistics. But if you look at just the letters, they are just arranged randomly. There is no specific order of any of the letters. For us, dictionary meaning of statistics means we are going to learn something based on the counting process or the probability, things like this. But if you look at these words, S-T-A, these words are just arranged in a random way, irrespective of order. And that's why I would say that blindly you can go for combination. Combination, I mean to say that NCR process. Now, how can I do this thing? Look at here. Statistics, that means how many total words are there? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight S T A state. I think my spelling is wrong. I'm sorry, guys. Let me just rewrite this statistic spelling so that will make more sense. So we can do like this S T A S T A T I S T I C S statistics. Right now, if you count this word, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, there are total ten words. That means my n is equal to ten. Now, out of this n, so I would like to write ncr form, or you can say n factorial over my first cell n one factorial, n two factorial dot 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 n r factorial. This formula I want to use over here because combination. Now, my n equal to ten, as I told you, so it is ten factorial divided by n one. How many n S are there, you can see over here, uh, there is a one, two, one, two, and three. Three S are there. So S that forms my first cell. So I would say three times S. So that is three factorial. Irrespective of, you can start from here also, this S and this S and this S. Order is not important. So combination. Okay, then after T, how many T's are there? One, two, and three. Three T's are there. So that means I would like to say that is equal to three and three. If somebody says somebody, some someone can also write in this form too, that 10 and then after three S and the, this is my S, this is my T. Three T, then after A. How many A? S, T, A, T, I, S, T, I, yes, T, I, C, S. Yes, how many A is there? Just one, am I right? So here it is one. So I would like to write over here just one factorial. So A is covered. Then after T is already covered, then I. How many I are there? 
i and i so it is one and two so that is equal to two so two i here it is a and here it is i two i is there so i would like to write here two factorial and then after what word is left out c so how many c's are there this is one c and this is second c right one c and second c that means again we have two so these are this is my c so that is equal to again two factorial so in sort i can write that is equal to 10 factorial if you use your calculator you're going to get one number so that number, I don't know, maybe some 50,400, something like this. So that is the answer. So there are 50,400 ways, different letters, I mean, say different ways, or different letters arrangements can be made from the letters in the word statistics, from the word statistics. I would like to continue with the same thing. Suppose I give you another word and another word is, suppose it is infinity. I N F I N I T Y. Let me just continue with this one. This is the exercise example 2.45 in your book, page number 52. So let me just save this one. So here it is, save folder and uh, same one, save as. And then let me clear this one, clear the board. So I'm going to get. I'm going to get now the example number 2.45, and that is I N F N I T in I N F I N I T Y, I N F I N I T Y infinity, right? Infinity this is 2.45. So I can write this word in the form of yes. How can I write? So first of all, one, two, three four, five, six, seven, and eight. So it is eight and eight numbers. And how many times I? So one, I, I, and infinity and I, T, Y, right? So I can write that is equal to, yes, uh, yes, please help me. How many times we have I? I, N, F, I, so two times, and I, T, Y, so three times I, three times I, right? And then how many times we have uh, what? N, so one and two, two times N, so two times N. Then how many times F? One time F, so then F, I, N. How many times N? N is only counted, okay. Then I is only, uh, only counted, T, one time T, so one time T. And finally, y, so one time y. One factorial doesn't make, uh, I mean, say that is just one, so no need to write. So it is eight factorial divided by three factorial multiplied by two factorial, because one factorial is simply one, so no need to write. One factorial, one, blah, blah, blah. That's okay, no need to write. So that is equal to eight multiplied by seven multiplied by six multiplied by five multiplied by four multiplied by three factorial divided by three factorial times two. This three factorial, three factorial will get canceled out and here it is two. So two means here you can write three. So whatever the number you're going to get, that is the answer. Maybe you're going to get zero and uh, six, five, four, 20, 60, 60 and 56. So it is here six and 336. So probably you're going to get three, three, six, zero. So three, three, six, zero different ways to arrange this letters infinity. So that's how you can solve the problem given in the exercise problem. One of the problems I solved over here, that is exercise number uh, 2.44. Let me go for another example, suppose 2.42. 2.42, 43, my bad, 2.43. 2.43 says that in how many ways can five different trees be planted in a circle? We have five trees. One, two, three, four, and five. And you want to one, two, three, four, and five. And you want to plant these five trees in a circle. You know this for circle is a, this is a because once you plant one tree, that means it will not be any kind of repetition. That one is fixed, right? So then after second tree, third tree, fourth tree, once you write suppose fifth tree over here, then after that means fifth tree will not take any other position except this one. So two, three, four, one, five, like this. That means order must be important over here. It's a problem of permutation. It's a problem of permutation. And in this permutation, because it is a circle, permutation in a circle, and that means total n equal to five. So you have to have n minus one factorial by definition. So it has to be four factorial. That is four into three into two into one. Four threes are 12 to the 24. So there are 24 ways to arrange 
five trees or plant five trees in a circle form, in a circular form. So this is the example exercise problem 2.43 given to you in the book. Now let me go through uh, <coughs> Uh, let me go through another example. Suppose, let me start from the beginning. Exercise 2.21. Exercise 2.21. So, I will read the example for you. Otherwise, you can use the book. So, 2.21. Exercise 2.21 says that uh, registering or reg uh, registrants as a large Convention are offered six sightseeing tours on each of three days. So six sightseeing tours. Six sorry. In each of three days. In each of three days. <laughs> Excuse me. Six sightseeing tour each of three days. Right, guys? So, how can we solve this one? This six sightseeing tour, that is my event one, N1, three days, event N2, so that is very natural, N1 times N2, and that is equal to six multiplied by three, and that is equal to 18 different ways. 18 different ways. So, Registrants at a large convention are offered six sightseeing tours on each of three days. In how many ways can a person arrange to go on a sightseeing tour planned by this convention? So n1 equal to six and this, so that is very simple. I can go for one more example, suppose this is 2.22. Next example. Now it's based on the blood group. How many blood groups are there? A, B, A, B, and O. So AB plus AB minus, A plus A minus, B plus B minus, O plus O minus. That means there are eight types of blood groups. Example is like this. In a medical study, patients are classified in eight ways according to whether they have blood types AB plus AB minus, A plus A minus, B plus B minus, O plus O minus. And also according to whether their blood pressure is, now blood pressure is low, normal, and high. So eight blood groups, that is my N1 equal to eight first event, and N2 equal to three types of each blood group has, because N1 is occurring, N2 is occurring with respect to N1. Once you have blood group, suppose O+, plus, but that blood group people, person, his blood group, I mean that his blood is, Either it is, he has a low blood pressure or the blood pressure is normal in the body or he has a blood, high blood pressure. So there are three different types you can measure based once you fix the blood group. And that means I can say N1 times N2 by rule 2.1, it is eight times three. So that is equal to again 24 ways, 24 ways of uh, the number of ways in which the patients can be classified. These are the ways in which the patients can be classified. Now, I just let me save, save this part also. And I can go over. Let me stop sharing this one. And again, let me go to the book. So if I share my book over here again, you can see. We went over this first example. We went over the second example. Now I would like to go over example number 2.26. It says that a California study concluded that following seven sim simple health rules can extended, extend a man's life by 11 years on the average and a woman's life by seven years. So 11 years and seven years. Okay. <clears throat> These seven rules are follows. No smoking, first rule. Get regular exercise, second rule. Use alcohol only in moderation, third rule. Get seven of eight hours of sleep, fourth. Maintain proper weight, five. Eat breakfast, six. And do not eat between meals. Means your uh, lunch and supper. Do not eat anything between these two meals. In how many ways, so seven rules are there. In how many ways a person adopt five of these rules to follow. If the person, okay, five of these rules to follow. That's the question. It says that if the person presently violates all seven rules, 
person presently violates all seven rules, that means out of, uh, uh, you can see here, all seven, the second question is, if the person never drinks and always eat breakfast. So let me again share my whiteboard and whiteboard says that, okay, 2.26. 2.26. So it says that uh, there are 7C5 ways and 7C5 that is equal to 7 factorial divided by 7 minus 5 factorial times 5 factorial and that is equal to 5, 5 and 7, 3, 6 are 42 divided by 2. So it is 21 ways. So 21 ways are there. Second part is uh, if the person never drinks and always eat breakfast, never drinks and always eat breakfast, okay, so how many, in how many ways can a person adopt five of these rules? Okay, so that is now, the second part is 5C3, that is equal to five factorial divided five minus three, that is equal to two factorial and three factorial. So whatever the number you are getting, that is the answer. I think it is 10, 10 ways. So 10 ways are there. Okay. Now let's go for example number 2.32, 2.32, good example. <laughs> 2.32, it says that in how many ways six couple be lined up to get a bus? Now six couple, oh, sorry, I'm sorry, six people to be lined up to get a bus. Now six people to, to be lined up. That means how many possibilities are there? First person, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Then you can change the interval. Suppose second person is first, first, first person is second, and three, four, five, six as it is. Or you can make all these arrangements. So there are specific arrangements. That means that can be done by six factorial, six factorial different ways. Six multiplied by five, multiplied by four, multiplied by three, multiplied by two, multiplied by one, six factorial is always 720. So there are 720 ways that six people can be lined up to get a bus. Okay, that is my A part. Now my B part. My B part says that if three specific person among six, now suppose you have six person, uh, A, B, C, D, E, and F. Six persons are there. In three specific pers uh, persons among six, insist on following each other. How many ways are possible? Three persons, suppose A, B, C, they want to follow each other. They want to follow each other, but they don't, don't want to follow any one of these two. That means any one of these three. That means you can write like this, suppose A, B, C. So you can write like this, A, B, C, and then, or A, B, C, and then D, E, F. Or you can write like D, then A, B, C, and E, F. Or you can write E, yes, and A, B, C, and D, F. Or you can write F, and A, B, C, and Yes, A, B, C, D, and F, and D, and E, right? So different ways are there. Good. Now, so how can you answer this question? So certain three persons can follow each other in a line of six people in a specific order, that is specific order, right? Specific order um, is four ways, or you can write, uh, these three people now you can see here, you can these people can interchange because if A, B, C, it could be B, C, A, 2. It could be A, C, B, 2 because anyway, they are lined up with each other. They are lined up with each other. You can interchange that part too. So don't forget this part. So I would say that that is four times, four, fact, uh, four arrangement times this three factorial. So that is equal to 24 ways with regard to order. With regard to order. So again, let me repeat this thing. A certain three persons can follow each other. This is just the example I took ABC. You may have B, C, E, you may have A, D, A, A, E, F like this. So there are here A, B, C, that is just the one way. Otherwise, as I told you that you can have A, B, C, or you can have B, C, D, or you have C, D, E, or you have D, E, F, something like this. Right? So certain three persons can follow each other in a line of six people in a specific order is four ways, or you can say four multiplied by three factorial ways, three factorial ways with regard to the order. The other three person can 
then be placed in a line by 3%. So other 3%, let me write like this, the other 3%, other 3 persons can be then, can be then placed, placed in a line in three factorial way, right? Three factorial way and three factorial that is equal to six ways. That is equal to, this is just the understanding. Let me remove this one. So our theorem, I think 2.1, it says that total first event that is N1, second event is N2. So total N1 times N2, so that is equal to N1 times N2, that is 24 multiplied by six. So that is equal to the numbers, whatever the number, I think 24 multiplied by six, 25, six are 150. So minus six, it is 144. So 144 ways, there are 144 ways to line up six people with a certain three following each other, with a certain three following each other. <clears throat> certain three following each other. Now let me go through the C part. If two specific person among six refuse to follow each other, how many ways are possible? Two specific people, they refuse to follow each other. That means suppose A and B, they refuse to follow each other, right? They can, this A or B can follow either C, D, E, F, anyone. So you can make a combination A, C, then B, D, E, F, or A, D, then B, D, E, F, or A, E, then B, D, E, F, or A, F, then B, D, E, F, and B, like this. So this B can take any of the positions, either here or here or here or here. Um, sorry, not here, or here. So it is here, here, or here, like this. Right, but A and B cannot be together. A and B cannot be together. That is my part C. So my part C says that, let me write it down over here. My part C says that two people, two specific person among six refuse to follow each other. How many ways are possible? How many ways are possible? So similar, just like in our previous example, like B, I would say that the number of ways that two specific person can follow each other, that is uh, given in terms of like this, five times two factorial times four factorial. Five times two factorial times four factorial, and that is equal to 240 ways, right? Because out of this six, once you fix one, right? Then after two factorial and four factorial. And therefore there are 720 ways, 720 ways that is over here. 720 ways, look at over here. When all six people are lined up, okay? They can line up in any order. But we need to remove this 240 because this is the order in which two people, they don't want to stand together. So 720 minus 240 and whatever the answer, that is the ways, number of ways, if a certain two person refuse to follow each other. Certain two person, sorry, 480. Certain two person, 480 ways, that certain two persons, refused to follow each other, refused to follow each other. Certain two persons refused to follow each other. So that's how you can answer these questions. Um, let me go through uh, which example now, let's uh, just go through there is one example 2.34 in which the same thing is there. Just try to arrange the word Columbus, C-O-L-U-M-C-O, Columbus, C-O-L-U-M-N-S, or Columbus, something like this. Again, you can use the same technique, same, same technique for the combination. So that is okay. That's not a big deal. I think you can solve all these examples by your own. So I don't want to uh, spend more time on each, on this one. So well, let's go for something new now. Uh, Let's take one more and then after I think we can switch over to something new. Okay, so in how many ways can four boys and five girls sit in a row if the boys and girls must alternate? Example, let me just save this one. Clear the drawing and 2.37. 2.37. In how many ways can four boys and five girls sit in a row? Four boys and five girls. Please keep in mind this thing. Sit in a row if the boys and girls must alternate. Right? So boy 
girl, boy, girl, boy, girl, like this. How many boys are there? You can see here in how many ways, four boys, one, two, three, four boys and five girls. One, two, three, four, and five, right? So five girls and four boys must, I mean to say, sit in a row if the boys and girls must alternate, must alternate. What should be the answer? We first, uh, the first seat must be filled up, filled by five girls and the second seat is filled by four boys, right? So first seat, as I told you, that is filled by any one of these five girls, any of five girls and the second position, second seat be filled off, uh, filled by any of four boys. So that's why I wrote it down. You can write G1, and B1 like this, G2 and B2, G3 and B3, that is more appropriate, G4 and B4 and G5. So five girls and four boys, right? So that is very simple that you can write like this, that out of five, your first position can be filled up by one of the girls. That means now how many positions are left out for girls, four positions left out for G2. And out of four position, one position is filled up over here for boy. So this is my first two positions. Then after four, and because four position, one of the positions out of four, one of the position is filled up over here. That means here I have three left out. Then after four girls are one and two, two girls are occupied out of five. That means how many left out? How many left out for this one? So for this one, you have three girls and two boys. Then after, this is this and this. Then after for this one, you have two and one, right? Two and one. And finally, for this boy, only one position is left out. Oh, sorry, girl, one position is left out and there is two, so it is one. So that means I can say that five times four times three, sorry, four times three times three times two times two times one times one, and that is equal to whatever the answer, whatever you're getting, that is the answer. So these are the ways that five girls and four boys can be seated in a row in an alternating form. Last example, and we will be switched to the next one. Last example is 2.38. I think I took plenty of examples. Hmm. It says that four married couples have bought eight seats. Four married couples have bought eight seats. So one couple, two couple, three couple, and fourth couple. Right, and they bought eight seats, so one and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight. Four married couples have bought eight seats in some row for a concert. Concert. In how many different ways can they be seated? Okay, the first question is, there is no restriction, with no restriction, with no restriction. How many ways they can be seated with no restriction. Right, guys? So, eight guys with and no restriction, it is eight factorial form. So, this is the answer. Eight factorial ways. B part. Each couple is to sit together. Each couple is to sit together. That means, suppose this is boy and girl, so they are sitting together, boy and girl, boy and girl, boy and girl, they are sitting together, right? But you can interchange also, that here boy and girl, so here girl and boy, girl and boy, right? Because here, girl and boy, so boy, you can interchange this part. So, there are four factorial ways, one, two, three, four, one is four, four, four factorial ways, and then after you have one, two, three, four, you can rearrange this one by Another four factorial, you can say two to the power four. That is the same thing. So two to the power four times four factorial ways, right guys? Because you are changing this in, you are interchanging this one. This is one time, two times, three times, four times. So two people are interchanged, two to the power two square, two cube, two to the power four, like this. So this many ways, this many ways, each couple, if each couple is to sit together, couple can sit together, right? Naturally, this number is 
less than the previous one because there was no restriction over here. So this number would be way lesser than this one. The third question is, if all the men sits together to the right of all the women, right of all the women, all men sits together, it means one, two, three, and four. All four men right this side uh, to the all, if all men sit together to the right of all the women. Okay, right of all the women. So one, two, three, and four, four women. And then after one, two, three, and four, four men. So that means there is four people. Now these four guys, suppose the first person, his wife is here. She could take the position here. She could take the position here or here. So that arrangement that is for four factorial base. That is for four factorial base. Same here. All gents, male, they are sitting here, 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 and here. First couple, man is sitting here, or second couple, or third couple, or fourth couple. So we have another, another four factorial possibilities. So that is equal to four factorial into four factorial, what it may be. So these are the ways that all the men can sit right to all the women. So this way you can answer the question. The last example, I'm sorry, I'm just increasing the numbers. So 2.4, the last example is, in how many ways can five starting positions on a basketball team be filled with eight men who can play any of the position? Any of the position, guys, look at over here. Who can play any of the position. So out of eight, you are going to pick five. So it is five factorial or sorry, eight factorial divided by five factorial. So these are the ways it's a permutation problem. Why? Because if the first position is filled up to play this game, basketball game, that means that count, this guy is not going to count again. That guy, that position is filled. Then second, third, fourth, fifth, like this. So out of it, we are just going to pick five. So it's a problem of uh, permutation. Please keep in mind this thing. So I think I saw plenty of examples. And now let me say... Uh, let me just save this part and let's now go for the probability of an event, article 2.4. Probability of an event, article 2.4. Probability of an event. Um, so now probability starts. Look at here, guys. The probability of an event, suppose A, is the sum of the weights of all the sample points, is the sum of the weights of all sample points, all sample points in A, all sample points in A, and therefore, I would say that probability will not exceed one. Probability always lies between zero and one. If you are getting probability, this is 0.5. If you are getting this probability 0.5, it's neutral. I mean to say that event may occur, may not. Or if you are getting the probability value nearer to one, that means there are maximum chances of occurring that event. If you are getting the number nearer to zero, that means the chances are getting less of occurring that event. Zero means that event definitely will not occur. So that's what probability always lies between zero and one. So this is further, suppose your A is equal to in a, is a sequence of mutually exclusive event. Suppose you have A1, A2, A3 dot 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 is a mutually exclusive event, is a mutually exclusive event. Mutually exclusive event, that means A1 has nothing to do with A2, A2 has nothing to do with A3. So if you use the set theory in the previous case, the same thing, A1 union, A2 union, A3 union, dot, 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 that is equal to probability of A1 plus probability of A2 plus probability of A3, dot, 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 and so on. So that's how That's how you can get the probability. So probability of A1, A2, and A3. Right, guys? Good. Then after the next one is, um, let me give you the example. A coin is tossed twice. One coin is there, and you need to toss that coin twice. That means 
what is the probability that at least one head occurs? So your sample space is, if you are tossing the coin twice, you may get both head, you may get one head, one tail, you, get, you may get one tail and one head, or you may get tail and tail, no head, right? So a coin is tossed twice, what is the probability that at least one head occurs? The sample space for this experiment is this one. If the coin is balanced, each of these outcomes is equally likely to be occurred. And that's why, suppose I say that, therefore we assign a probability of W of each of the sample points, each of these sample points, then what will happen? Now, this is my sample points. My event is, I just want at least one head. What is the probability that at least one head occurs? So I want at least one head. That means my points of set A that is equal to H, H, T, and T, H. At least one head is there. At least one head is there. Now suppose the probability of getting the first element, getting two H, two heads. That is out of this four, so it is one fourth. Probability of getting one head and one tail, that is also one fourth, right? Probability of getting one T, one tail, and one H, that is also one fourth. Probability of getting one, both tails, that is also one fourth. That is also one fourth. And that's why I told you that uh, we assign a probability of W to each sample points, probability W of each sample point. So it is four W is equal to total probability is one. So this implies that W is equal to one fourth. So for each of these sample points, each of these sample points, our probability is this one or this one or this one or this one with respect to first, second, third, and fourth. First, second, third, and fourth. And I would like to go for the probability of my event A. You know that probability of H and H because of this one, this probability of H and H is one fourth. So one fourth. Probability of H and T, that is also one fourth. Probability of T and H is also one fourth. So they are three by four. That is the probability. And three by four, that is equal to 0 0.75. So probability is much more higher to get um, at least one hail by tossing a coin twice. My next example is, let me save this one. Let me clear this one. And the next example is the example number 2.25 from the book. A die is tossed in such a way that an event, even number is twice as likely to occur as an odd number. Good. So die is tossed, that means your sample points are one, two, three, four, five, and six. But it says that Okay, it says that even number is twice as likely to occur as an odd number. Look at this condition. Even number is as likely to, even number is twice as likely is twice as likely to occur as an odd number even number is as likely to occur, twice as likely to occur as an odd number, right? That means suppose A1 is the even number, probability of this one is one sixth, right? So this is one sixth, but this, this is the even number. This is the even number. So my probability of this one will be two sixth. This is the even, uh, sorry, odd number. My probability will be one sixth, something like this. My probability actually is not one sixth because uh, let me just rewrite this one. Let me just explain to you. For odd number, it is one. For even number two, odd number one, even number two, odd number one, even number two. So two plus one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So there is nine. Now for even number, what will happen? Even number, that means for one, one is an suppose odd number. So my probability is one ninth. This is the even number. My probability is two over nine. This is the odd number. My probability is again one over nine. This is the even number. My probability is again two over nine because it is twice as likely to occur as an odd. My five is an odd number. That means my probability is one over nine. And my six is an even number. That means my probability is two over nine. That is the probability. Now suppose I have one set E is equal to, I would say one, two, and uh, what? One, two, and three, suppose. So what is the probability of E? So probability of E that is equal to, because one, look at here, one is probability one ninth, two,
probability that is 2 over 9, 3 probability is 1 over 9. So that is equal to 4 over 9. That is equal to 4 over 9. Right, guys? Suppose I have the same example. I have, sorry, A is equal to, A is equal to 2, 4, 6. 2, 4, 6. And B is equal to, suppose, 3 and 6. 3 and 6. And suppose I want to go for A union B. So A union B is naturally 2, 4, 2, 3, 4, and 6. 2, 3, 4, and 6. 2, 3, 4, and 6. There, of course, A intersection B, that is equal to, six that is equal to six so if i want to go for the probability of a union b in that case because two is an even number so i have two over nine three is an odd number one over nine four is an even number two over nine six is an even number so it is again two over nine here it is just one so it is two over nine so here it is nothing but two plus three two three four five six seven right so total probability is seven over nine and here for interse intersection it is two over nine so if the sample space of an experiment contains n elements the sample space of an experiment contains n elements n elements let me i think change the color the sample space contains n elements of all which are equally likely to occur we assigned a probability equal to so probability is probability of n elements, the probability is one over n for each of the element, one over n to each of n points, to each of n points, each of n points. Okay. To each of n points. Probability is 1 over n to each of n points. The probability of any event A containing n of these n samples. So if probability of any, any event A, any event A contains n points out of n containing n of these n sample points, n points from n samples or n samples. So this probability, this probability is given by this probability of event A that is equal to n divided by n. Very simple, n divided by n. I can give you a couple examples based on this one. And then after we will start the additive rule or we will stop over there, uh, we'll see. So let me now save this one and then after stop setting and now let me go back to the book. So we are doing, we did these examples, we are doing this one, this one is done, this one is done, this one is done and we are over here. Look at this example guys. A statistics class of engineers consists of 25 individuals, 10 mechanical, 10 electrical, and eight civil engineering students. If a person is randomly selected by the instructor to answer a question, find the probability that the student chosen is an industrial engineering major, or and B is civil engineering or an electrical engineering. See, industrial engineering, that's fine. How many total students are there? 25 industrial engineering students out of this 20, sorry, 25, then 10 mechanical. So 25 plus 10, 35 plus 10, 45 plus eight, that is equal to 53. So there are 53 engineering students. Out of this 53 students, 25 are industrial engineering, industrial engineering. And that's what we are looking for, that an industrial engineering major. So probability of getting industrial engineering major, 25, that is my small n, and total number of engineer, engineering students, they are 53. So 25, capital N is 53, total number of sample points. Out of the sample points, we are choosing, we are choosing only industrial engineering, 25. So that's why the probability of industrial engineering is 25 or 53. Second part, <coughs> a civil engineering, or an electrical engineering, or, or means union. So civil is C, let me denote by capital C. Electrical means capital E. So C union E. So C union E, how many students are there? For uh, civil engineering, that is eight, and electrical, that is 10. So eight plus 10, that is equal to 18 out of 53. So 18 out of 53, because now we are counting both, 
right? And they are mutually exclusive. So 18 divided by 53. So that's how you can use this rule 2.3 that out of n sample points, experiment can result in any one of n different equally likely outcomes. Different, look at over here, different. Different equally likely outcomes. Once the student is over here, here, he is from electrical. That means he is not civil major. He is just electrical major like this. So different students. And that's why we just added 10 plus 8. That is 18 divided by 53. So that's how you can figure it out. The next example is <coughs> in a poker, in a poker hand consisting of five cards, find the probability of holding two aces and three jacks. Good. Nice example. Now look at over here, guys. Um, poker hand consisting of five cards, right? Now, consisting of five cards, find the probability of holding two aces. How many aces are there in the card, in the deck of card? Four aces are there, right? right? Out of this four, out of this four, we are going to pick just two, right? Irrespective of this, now order is not important. You can pick diamond, you can pick black, you can pick heart, slash, whatever you want to pick. So out of this four, you are going to pick two aces. So that is arrangement is combination because order is not important. So it is 4C2. So by definition, four factorial, four minus two is two factorial and two factorial, NCR definition. So that is six ways. Good. So two aces and three jacks. How many jacks are there in the deck, uh, in, in a card deck? So how many jacks? There are four jacks, right? For each of our four colors. And you are going to pick three out of this four. So again, my combination is 4C3. So that is again four. So in a poker hand consisting of five card, two and three like this in this fashion. So you now, you're not going to multiply because this is my event N1, this is my event N2, multiply this N1 and N2. So you're going to get 24 hands with two aces and three jacks. The total number of five cards, pokers, uh, five card poker hands, all of which are equally likely. And that's why it is, look at over here, N equal to, now, this is just my N1 and N2. This is just my N1 and N2. Please be careful, guys. My N1 is this, N2 is this. So N1 times N2, N1 times N2, that is just the, in, the probability of, is just the uh, holding two aces and three jacks. But you are going to, out of how much? You are going to pick just five cards from the deck of 52 cards deck of 52 cards. So out of 52, you are going to pick just five cards. So total number of sample points, that is, 52 factorial divided by 52 minus 5 means 47 factorial times 5 factorial because this is my N, this is my R. So NCR is N minus N factorial or N minus R factorial times R factorial. This is the answer, right? Now, these N1 and N2, these are 24 cards. These are the possibilities of getting these two ACs and three jacks, just five cards out of 52 cards deck. But total number of sample points that is equal to my Cap it by n is nothing but this one. N1, N2, that will give you me uh, that 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 will give us small n. This N1 and N2, actually, that is nothing but my small n. Look at over here, my small n. And my capital N is this one. So if I divide this 24 divided by this one, this is the probability. And you can see this number lies between 0 and 1. So that makes perfect sense. So this is the probability of getting the two aces and three jacks out of the poker card consisting of five, um, of 52 and uh, of five cards, right? So this is the way we can go for the probability and the probability of an event, I mean to say. And now we are going to start the edit you rule. Edit you rule. Uh, I think it is almost one hour, so I don't want to continue with this one, but next time we will start additive rule and we will continue with this additive rule and we will go for the examples and then if time permits, we will go for the article 2.6 conditional probability independence and the product rule. Otherwise, we will be making two videos. One is for additive rules, article 2.5 with examples, illustrative examples, and exercise problems. And then after, we will start Article 2.6. So let me stop over here, and we'll continue with this attitude rule next time. Thank you so much. Let me stop sharing this one, and uh, let me stop my recording also. Thank you, guys. See you next time. Have a good day.